Bhavan ji. I uh, hope you're doing okay. Uh, hello from London on a very gloomy day. And for those who don't know, we are studying the book uh, Living Hanuman from, written by Pavan Mishra ji. And today we are going to study the verse 18 and 19. I must say Pavan ji, very knowledge intense, very juicy verses is the right word to say. So verse 18 and 19 together. Uh, starting with verse 18. Jug Sahestri Jojan Parbhanu Lilio Tahi Madhurfal Janu Prabhu Mudrika Milimukh Mahi Jaladi Langai Acharaj Nahi. And then there is an English translation Orb of Sun, very inviting, miles and miles and miles away. You got the fruit simply flying, plucking it and swallowed away. Holding the ring of Lord in your mouth, you crossed the sea. Unbelievable to the world, your leap is real for me. Very, very beautiful verses. One talks about the sun, the other talks about the sea and how the significance uh, is there in our everyday life. So I would hand over to you. But I know that this, these two verses have a lot of content covering the chakras, uh, covering the mythological story that is, you know, that is represented, a very sublime meaning of it in our everyday life. But in this short video, whatever little we can grasp, we would love to know from you. Uh, it just simply means Juk Sahas Jojan. Uh, this has been translated as the distance between earth and sun. It is accurate to 1% variation with the distance that has been calculated uh, by NASA. So that is on record. Juksa has chosen. But Bhanu, Bhanu means the source of light, sun. So sun located at such a far distance, miles and miles away. Lilyu tahi madhurpal jam. You took that sun in your mouth as if that sun was a sweet fruit. And then, Prabhu mudrika milimuk mahi jaladhi langhe achraj nahi. So, Prabhu mudrika, Prabhu, the Lord, mudrika, the ring, Lord's ring, Mili Mukh Mahi, you kept in your mouth, Mukh, mouth, Mahi, in the mouth, you kept it. Keeping the Lord's ring in your mouth, Jaladi Lang Ke Achraj Nahi, Jaladi, the ocean, Lang, to leap across, Achraj, surprise, Nahi, no. So that means you leapt across the ocean, and that is of no surprise, because you leapt across, miles, thousands and hundreds and thousands of miles and pluck the sun and put it in your mouth. Here you have just leapt across an ocean and what you held in your mouth was the Lord's ring, which was in size a very minor fraction of what you could, what you have already done. Now these two verses have a story behind it. We can debate till the end whether it was true or not, but the message in the story, the message in these verses are absolutely true. And we are looking at uh, studying these verses from the perspective of a seeker, of a devotee, of, uh, of a spiritual practitioner on the path. And we are using this te these texts to understand uh, what is there for us as a guidance in a embedded in a cryptic manner in these verses. These verses at the outside, at the topmost layer are uh, narrating a story, a storyline of a man's life. And at deeper layer, they are directing our attention and awareness to something very, very deep within us. So at that distance, the sun, Bhanu, the source of light. We have to understand that source of light, sun, also was guru of Hanumanji in this incarnation. When Hanumanji came on earth as an incarnation, he was the 11th incarnation of Shiva. 
all the time we find in the stories of incarnations that when they incarnate on earth, they almost need to be reminded of their divinities and powers and uh, how the world functions. They need to be reminded because in the process of incarnation, uh, somewhere all of this information goes into their subconscious. So Bhagavan Ram or Krishna, they all go to a guru to relearn which they already know. So Hanumanji also, he, he was trusted to Surya Dev, sun god, to be taught all the knowledge that he needed for his work as an incarnation. And it is said in the Bhagavad Gita that Bhagavan gave all this knowledge first to sun himself. So sun is the depository of divine knowledge. It's a conscient being. Uh, in our tradition, we understand sun to be a conscient being, though it is it has a material body, but you can say just as we have a material body, a human body, but there is a conscient being inside it. Similarly, sun is known as Savita Devta, is the Pratyaksha Devta, it is right in front of us. And he is Hanumanji's guru. So in one way here, the indication is to go and have your guru for breakfast. Eat your guru for breakfast. That's the message here. Madhur Faljan, as if it's the sweet fruit, take him all in your mouth, straight. Uh, we have, uh, we learn about following our guru. We learn about learning from our guru. We learn about practicing with the guru, doing what the guru says. But the concept of consuming our guru, totally digested, assimilated, and made into me, when we turn our guru into ourselves, our, our life itself. That is one message that comes out of this. The other one is about leap itself. Hanumanji, whatever he accomplished, he accomplished that through leaps. We say through leaps and bounds, through a leap, not as a, not in an arithmetically progressive way, but in a geometrically progressive manner. We need to understand what are the destinations or goals in our lives and how do we arrive at that with a leap? How do we define it as a leap? Normally, when it comes to spiritual learning, spiritual practices, we tend to shy away from taking a very strong step. We tend to say, okay, we will see. We don't need to do this. We don't need to become uncomfortable. You need to continue doing what you want to do. You want to live your life the way you want, eat what you want. Everything is okay. Just do a little bit of this and that. That is not leap. You may not be able to accomplish taking the sun in your mouth. You will be still able to walk around in the sun, but it's another thing to, to eat the sun. For example, also another practice that I have mentioned in the book itself is about gazing meditatively at the sun as if you are consuming the sun through your eyes, gazing meditatively at the red ball of the rising sun. To begin with, we do this trataka on the red orb on the, when you are getting infrared light, infrared light coming from the sun. Gazing meditatively, doing a trataka, uh, activates our pineal gland, our hypothalamus, and resets our circadian rhythm and many, many, many biological rhythm. And when you're gazing at the sun and you're gazing at it for say five, seven, eight minutes, the moment you cross eight minutes, we all know sunlight takes eight minutes to start from the sun and arrive at earth. So after eight minutes, all the light that is entering into your eyes into yourself was the sun itself eight minutes ago. Eight minutes ago, what was the sun becomes the light and enters and becomes you. It's uh, one of the most physical way to eat the sun, to have sun for breakfast. 
sunlight for breakfast. Uh, at a figurative level, uh, it, it points towards the third aspect of spiritual practice. Spiritual practice, the triad of spiritual practices, Shravana, Manana, Nididhyasana. Shravana, listening. Manana, reflecting. Nididhyasana, making it your very own. Making it your very own. So here uh, it is indicated how to make your guru's uh, very presence your very own. Uh, almost to the point that in your presence, you should be, not should be, people around you should be able to feel the same presence as that of your guru. That would be the high point of that. So this is the first verse. And the next verse is connected. So on one side, it is talking about leaping and going up to the sun. In the next verse, leaping across the ocean. Bhagwan Ram appointed Hanumanji as the emissary and the task of finding Sita Ji and delivering his message to her. And the message was very simple, that Bhagwan Ram is there, he will arrive and rescue you. But to give Sita Ji the validation that this message comes from Bhagwan Ram, he gave Hanumanji the mudrika, the ring, which Hanumanji did not have a bag or a, or a carry bag. Uh, uh, he, he put it in his mouth, not to lose it. And it is said by the power of that ring of the Lord, he could leap across the ocean and land up in Lanka. The journey across the ocean was also full of challenges. There were three major challenges. One, I'm just recapping it quickly so that it doesn't take long. One, Mount Mayanak. It was a pleasure resort of the gods. It appeared in front of Hanumanji and the mountain spoke to Hanuman saying, Oh Hanuman, your father saved me once. Today, it would be my pleasure to host you in this little paradise. Please come, rest for a little while and then go on on your journey. Hanumanji could have chosen to rest there. He was already in flight for some time before this came up in front of him, but he did not. He thanked Manak, the mountain, and he said, I am on an urgent mission. I cannot rest before the mission is accomplished. The second, Sursa, the mother of serpents, the mother of Nagas. She came up whoop, in front of him and said, Hanuman, you are my food. And I'm, you are in front of me and I must consume you. It is my dharma to consume you and it is your dharma to become my food. And Hanumanji said, okay, I agree to do that. Please open your mouth. And Sursa kept opening her mouth and Hanuman kept expanding his body till Sursa opened her mouth, maxed out and Hanumanji immediately reduced himself in size, went in and came out and said, I have been in you, been as your food, and I've come out. Thank you very much. Can you let me go on my way? You'll find here that in the first case, that was like a friendly enticement on our path, something very harmless, something very friendly. Please come, relax. This is only a weekend. Come over, do your practices later on. Just one night won't disturb your practice. Miss your meditation for one evening. And how Hanmanji, in a very sweet way, thanked him for the invitation and moved on. And here is a challenge of consumption. Um, engulfment, something that wants to consume you, something that consumes you. Um, it could be a desire. It could be a desire to own something. And how Hanmanji does that and does not. 
does not resist it, does not fight with it, because there is chance to lose that battle. And yet comes out of it untouched, totally untouched, by using a trick, by using an illusion of having done that. These are only pointers. It will, we could probably do a separate video to understand what these three challenges are in our lives. And the third challenge, Simhika, Simhika, a demon, a demoness who would grab your shadow and pull you down into the ocean. And once you drown into the ocean, would have you for her meal, who grabs your shadows who grabs your shadow aspect, somebody that drowns you. So this um, ocean, this water body represents the second chakra, also known as the sex chakra, common, common uh, knowledge, a common name for that. But primarily, it is a chakra just behind the pubis, and it, it, it is called Swadhisthan Chakra, the second chakra. It's the water chakra. Swadhisthan means a chakra where the sense of the self resides. The many personalities that which we identify ourselves, the many needs, the many likes and dislikes. I am a tea person. I am a coffee person. I don't eat this. I love pizza. I'm a pizza person. I'm a Chinese person. These likes, dislikes, these orientations, these personalities that all sum up to make what we feel we are, all of that resides in that chakra. It's a chakra linked to our survival, but primarily linked to our emotions and desires, which makes our life go forward, our material life, the businesses of the world are run through the second chakra. And it is being indicated, pointed, that in our journey, if we, if we take the framework of Kundalini, then in the journey of Kundalini, we need to leap across the second chakra and not engage there. So when Sambhika came up, Hanmanji did not know, could not see Sambhika, because Sambhika used to be submerged in the ocean. You couldn't see her. But Hanmanji started feeling a bit heavy, as if somebody is pulling him down in his flight. And he had heard about Simika from Sugreev, his friend whom he was supporting and he was working with. So he remembered that and immediately knew that this is Simika. But here he chose to fight it out with her, but in a very special way. He entered into that, he did not shy away. He confronted that shadow aspect, entered deep in her belly and tore her apart. There was no more, any more existence of Sanghika left after that. Very deep spiritual significance. But these are also three areas that drag us down when we journey outward, upward from our Muladhar Chakra upward, or when we are going back from Manipur chakra downward towards Muladhan in any one of the practice. And it is not as if these are transactional practices. Day to day, as we live our lives, as we meet life, we are faced with these three types of challenges. One is this harmless enticement. And one is engulfment, something engulfing us. And one is entanglement the shadow side, our fears, depressions, anxieties, jealousies. These are our shadows that consume us. They are running as a program in our mind all the time. And the moment they get, get one of it, one of our emotions gets caught into this shadow uh, demoness, poof, we are pulled in. A whole weekend is gone reminiscing about a broken relationship when we had it in our college or school or something. <laughs> it's I, like, I like the context. I like your context. Like this is a very everyday context. Yes. Sorry. Yes. And that is Simhika. So the moment you begin to feel we are getting drawn, 
we have to understand that it is simika acting and now we have to confront it sometimes it is a fear some people are afraid nowadays in covid covid times fear is the biggest uh, biggest shadow people are afraid now how do you face it you face it by turning yourself around and looking into the eye of that fear what is the fear i will die so suppose you say so what i will die i have to die one time everybody has to die no one can escape this truth once and it can happen any time it can happen out of an accident and out of any cause you can drown and die there can be an accident and die you can die out of food poisoning you can be bombed when you are in a city traveling in middle east or wherever these days all kinds of things are happening so anything can happen there can be an earthquake you could be climbing and climbing a mountain and die you could get covid and die and also not die 88% people don't die rather 98 99% people don't die only 1% of people die out of covid so but even if i happen to be that 1% so what the moment you ask so what the fear has no answer this question so what tears the fear away similarly other shadow sides of our sense so these three challenges are indicated here and also indicated that we should not engage in resolving second chakra issues as if we are going to do you know suppose you are depressed or something engaging with that depression in a way that i'm trying to learning to i'm learning to uh, regress or of course there are therapies and i fold my hands and sure they are they help but then it is much better to skip it is much better to do something larger and dilute our challenges do something larger more meaningful and just ignore for example these challenges if you have ingested the sun which is in the previous verse that itself will help in dissolving these challenges the, that sun's energy that means that knowing that knowledge will help us identify these three challenges and help us deal with them in a manner that is suitable for that particular time of your life in that context that you are in there cannot be a simple formula but just that it is better not to engage but to slip by to cross over in that normally in the west in the name of tantra people are led into second chakra and get entangled and they are not able to come out of it one desire then another one practice and another all the time it is only a second chakra practice they talk about heart chakra they talk of all other chakras but they are they they are drawn they are only talking about that but existentially because they are practicing things around the second chakra they get totally engrossed in it and uh, pulled down and drowned in that water so Uh, for us our message is to discover our leap to discover our leap and uh, to to find a way to eat knowledge for breakfast to have light for breakfast uh, to find a way to do that in our lives absolutely i mean that's a good take away point but while you were saying this i by you know it just struck me in that moment that you said that even the gods when they came as incarnations they had to learn and when i when we look at us all of us like people around me it we find it so difficult and challenging to learn things because we we kind of box ourselves by saying you know this age i'm like i'm this age i don't need to change my ways anymore and the minute you said it that you know even the gods had gurus and they had to relearn and remind themselves of the powers that were or the divinity that existed within them it was like a reminder for me to like you know think in the direction where that every day a is a learning and there is no matter who you are that's one thing and the other thing that really struck me was you said that um 
you die only once and right now there's a hashtag that goes around which says yolo you live only once so at that expense of that the word yolo i don't know how i know so many people including myself we have done stuff which is just crazy and because we tell that you know you live only once but in the true sense of the meaning you live every day you die once and that's it like that i mean physically we die only once transformationally yes we die several personalities and we grow out of there but physically we die only once so that hashtag yolo should be like more like you kind of die only once and you live every single day and then i realized when we, i was studying these verses yesterday that you have taken up two very beautiful um, yoga mudras uh, i mean there with every verse there is one but in this one particularly there is a sun salutation and which you have mentioned like the 8 minutes concept Uh, the scientific like backing to that concept that 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 light was with the sun 8 minutes ago and it's reaching you so obviously like the sun salutation is a deep practice that is uh, i think practiced across globe i think it's the most popular uh, yoga thing and then in the verse 19 you have uh, um, addressed the kechri mudra which in our shri kula practice uh, when we all are studying together you have initially it was one of the primary things you said to start practicing and at that point none of us knew the relevance right now when we study the verse we understand that shri hanuman ji didn't wear any clothes he only wore like lion cloth so he had nothing to carry that ring and he rolled up his tongue to hold the ring in place and that kechri mudra practice is something that um at the starting of our course we did so nicely and obviously we need to practice it more often to be all honest here but yes the relevance of it uh turning the tongue inwards and when you when you were teaching us in the class you mentioned the amount of muscles and the attention and the awareness completely goes inwards and that's something very beautiful to practice even for children because when they are distracted just to keep them engaged and bring the awareness back so thank you thank you for that like it was is something very uh, practical that we can do and that's something i really do love about the book and there is the my action point which is the main takeaway from uh, each word so for the verse 18 is to set myself a high ideal and then meet and exceed it which very much sounds like absorbing the guru's energy entirely living it up like the sun and the verse 19 to face my challenges with all the strength that i have and not shy away from them i love the way you address the the obstacles shri hanuman ji met and the relativity of them how you bring them to everyday relativities of consumption and engulfment and it it kind of tells us that we are surrounded in an atmosphere where there is fear anxiety greed but i often remember your version of jay shri ram and it says that abundance is to be shared and with that note i i start my day every day thinking it that you know whatever i have made be everyone's and similarly learning it from you so thank you so much for giving us so many beautiful thoughts and everyday practices they really do touch our lives they really do thank you